Yes, I went to Government College of here, uh, which at that time was perhaps the very best secondary school in this country. Uh, it was modeled after the British public school system, the Eton and Harrow and Rugby uh, type, where the colonial masters tried to establish an equivalent of their supreme secondary school, modern secondary school uh, institutions for sons of African chiefs and the people who are going to be trained to take over the civil service in the future. So anyway, and we were lucky, uh, as it were, at that time to have a music master who was a professional music master in that he had a, a teaching diploma in music. And he selected some of us who were, in his opinion, talented in music and gave us courses in the theory of music, apart from singing and uh, playing instruments. So we performed operas and such things, uh, apart from singing chants and psalms and anthems in chapel as boys and uh, uh, grown-up boys. So I was a boy soprano uh, until I was 16. My voice broke quite late, as it were, and I went uh, from soprano to tenor. Uh, my classmates seems to have wandered from soprano alto bass and moved around so somewhat, uh, some significantly, others uh, not so much. But I went still from soprano to tenor, and I was privileged in taking part in uh, quite a few operas, apart from straight drama. Uh, we were lucky to have very good teachers, uh, Cambridge and Oxford graduates, and some London University, but mostly who were teachers who were on colonial service. And uh, they give us a pretty good form of education. So anyway, with that luck, I was interested in composing music, and I did write uh, music even as a teenager, uh, which was sung in chapel under the supervision of this uh, Alfred Farmer, who taught us music. And I went on to take, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to take examinations in music of the Trinity College and the Royal Schools of music up to a diploma level in Nigeria uh, before I got a scholarship, a federal government scholarship to go and study music abroad. And I went to the Royal College of Music, which was considered the most prestigious at that time in England. Uh, and I was lucky to study composition under Gordon Jacob, conducting with Sir Adrian Bolt, uh, singing with Mark Raphael. These are big famous names in England. I took a degree, Bachelor of Music, from the University of Durham, uh, which was then the, the, the third most prestigious uh, university in England, Oxford, Cambridge, Durham, and so on. Then London, uh, and others came. But I was privileged to have some of the best teachers in the world. All the shortcomings are mine, but I went, I went to the best schools and had some of the best teachers uh, like Adrian Bird, Gordon Jacob, uh, Mark Raffel, and um, Richard Latham, and so on, and took these degrees. I came back with a master's degree from the Royal College of Music, which demanded you to have not just the theoretical studies of harmony, counterpoint, orchestration, fugue, uh, and such theoretical subjects, history, but you also had to have a performance uh, degree in one of the performing professions of piano, organ, singing, violin, or any other instrument. So anyway, I came back from England in 1964 and became a young lecturer at the University of Nigeria in Soka. I taught there for two years, and then went on, on a fellowship, agri-fellowship, to Yale University in the United States of America to pursue a PhD. And uh, during that time, the war years came on. And at, again at Yale, uh, thank God, one of the top most universities in the world, and certainly in the United States of America, who had some of the best teachers. As I said, I've, luck I've been lucky to have gone to the best institutions and have the best teachers, all the other shortcomings are entirely my own, but I had the opportunities. But um, I sang with the Yale Glee Club, which was a different thing uh, from 
my experiences in England with mixed voice choral singing. Uh, in America, I was introduced to male voice singing in addition to the uh, mixed voice uh, choral music. But it was an, an experience which um, I treasure very much. Uh, it widened my compositional techniques, uh, which I had learned in England uh, under Gordon Jacob and others, and my experience in choral work, which I had done a lot in England over four years, and which I continue to do in America, um, it exposed me to many other things, and especially to a different kind of theoretical study in music. Uh, Alan Fort, uh, who was a scholar in some kind of, in a kind of theory of music, uh, different from the normal harmonic counterpoint orchestration, uh, fugue and all that, which I studied in England, uh, gave you a new form of analysis into tonal and post-tonal music and into structural levels of music and arts. And uh, even though I, I did write a dissertation after the coursework in Igbo choral mu music and the theory of it, it was those theoretical studies that I had at Yale that sharpened uh, uh, my intellect into analyzing African theory of music, which I'm, I'm glad to say, uh, without lacking any humility, that I, I, I've championed to be recognized as perhaps one of the best uh, proponents of the theory of African music. Uh, but I can remember in those years, there was a civil war in Nigeria. And uh, while I associated with friends at Yale and some of the Glee Club, and we went on a Latin American tour of 13 countries, 13 countries uh, in Central and South America. Uh, I was troubled because my country, uh, Biafra then, was in turmoil, in a difficult situation. There was starvation, there was malnutrition, there was Kwashioko, and there was the besieging of my people from all parts of uh, the country. So there was uh, enormous suffering. Well, we tried to raise funds in America, and I played a major part in that, raising funds from charitable organizations and individuals to help our people here in Nigeria, and thank God for people who are charitable, and there are plenty of them in the United States of America. They give us so much uh, that we were able to make a little contribution from there to, uh, uh, to the survival of our people in Nigeria. Uh, and it also inspired me to compose one of the most endearing music uh, uh, concerned with human suffering and the protection of God, uh, the love of God for humanity uh, during those experiences. So uh, I was happy in America, but I was unhappy about what was happening at that time. But I wound up stay, staying in America for a total of eight years, finished my uh, PhD at Yale, taught there for a number of years, and taught at some other institutions before I came back to Nigeria in 1974. Uh, to the University of Lagos, where I stayed, I stayed for the, another 27 years before retiring. So, but the experience of having studied in England, and that's one of the best teachers in the world, and best performers, and America, and suddenly a first-rate university, and that's one of the best teachers in the world, uh, I really thank God for the opportunities I, I have had. And, it's noteworthy that in all these places and at all these times, I kept analyzing when I was studying. Ah, I'll teach this in Nigeria. I'll teach this here. No, we will uh, not do this. This doesn't suit our, our purpose. Now, this, our culture will allow this. Ah, we will develop this in this way. So I was critically judging, even in my studies, what was necessary for us uh, in this country. And uh, thank God, I employed it, uh, the, the, the decisions 
the experiences arising from these uh, exposures when I taught at Nsoka uh, before the war and certainly when I returned here from the 70s, uh, it made me perhaps um, without lacking in modesty again, a more rounded musician, theoretically, historically, analytically, critically, and scholarly. Uh, so you could write uh, articles and books, uh, taking to the, the, the theoretical and practical aspects of music and all its ramifications, and theater, and other the arts, languages, I, I, I studied and spoke German and Italian, and uh, um, apart from English. But um, all these things helped me, thank God, to apply uh, the best acquired from elsewhere for the betterment, for the use of our people. Uh, unfortunately, the situation in Nigeria does not give opportunities, let me put it that way, for people to study theory of music to a high level, or even performance uh, to a high level. And uh, instead, there's so much dabbling, I'll put in quotes, in ethnomusicology, which is really some sort of social anthropology, uh, describing music as applied in cultural things. Uh, and many people um, who are professors today uh, did their studies in African music. And I used to ask the question, if we take off the word African, who's going to teach music? Music first must be seen as a universal phenomenon, an art by itself. And if you do not know music, you cannot know what's African about it. But first of all, conceive music as a universal art and then be able to determine this is African, this is non-African, this is Spanish, this is uh, Chinese, and so on. So we must know music uh, uh, before what's known, knowing what's African about it. Not just how music is used in worshiping gods and how dundu is uh, tuned and does, that's fine. But what, what how melody does it produce? What harmonic structures are there? How is it useful? for the generation. How can you apply it in a, a, a composition of today that will be universally acceptable? How can it defy Africa and Nigeria in particular uh, for the world? So um, these questions I kept asking and I have been uh, probing over the years. So I thank God that I have had the opportunity in England, in Germany, in Italy, in the United States of America, and of course in, in Nigeria, right from Omaha to have been exposed to these things so that they can apply them for the elevation of our own studies, not only in music, but in general studies, in theater, in languages, in grammar, in speech, uh, in writing, in literary publications, and so things. So that when one becomes a, a, somebody equipped with a rounded education, which you can impart on others and impact the society uh, therefrom. So I thank God for these opportunities, and I hope that I have made my contribution in transferring same to the generations uh, behind me. Thank God.